Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, hallelujah, praise God. This is a new day, a day that we can sit around the word of God. Salamat siyang to all my Indonesian friends. I just want to greet you this morning. What a privilege just to sit with you. I'm really excited about today's word. Um, yeah, good morning, good morning. Yes, hallelujah. Good morning, goeiemorgen, Pastor Tolly. May God bless you this morning. What a privilege. Yes, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Um, I'm really excited about today's word. Pastor Marius, goeiemorgen. Good morning, Doc Marius. God bless you. Yes, um, you know, we've been talking about discipleship. Um, and I just want to add, actually, this morning's word is actually adding on to what we've been talking on Kingdom Disciples Network um, last night with a Zoom meeting. And I just believe um, God is really doing something. Uh, good morning, Kuyamora March. Good morning. Hallelujah. What a privilege this morning that we can sit around the Word of God, just encourage people, activate people, ignite people, release the anointing over people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, good morning to everyone. Hallelujah. So yeah, this is the time, this is the season. God choose to create us in this season. My question, do we make a difference in our season? Sophia, goeiemorgen. Amanda, goeiemorgen, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Yes, my question this morning, are we building the kingdom? Are we so struggling just to survive with our own things and our own stuff that we do not have the resources to build the kingdom of God? What is the things that prohibit us to do what Jesus command us to do? And this morning the word is, is all about that. And uh, I just want to bring you into the word of God to show you. Pastor Bertha, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Bless you, Pastor Bertha. Also this morning you will go live. May God bless your ministry. But let's pray and we start this morning. And uh, like I've said, my theme this morning is let him handle the details. Let God handle the details. Let's pray and then we start this morning. Heavenly Father, we just surrender as we just come before your throne of grace in submission and under the authority of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will lead me, that the Word of God will touch the hearts and the minds of people, that the Word will not be stolen by the birds of prey or the all of all the, the demonic, or the, whatever there is, Lord, but it will fall on good soil and it will manifest a hundredfold. Lord, may the word that we receive, not just something we hear, but that we act upon the word, because if not, Lord, our house will be built on the sand. That's the people that only hear but never does something. I just pray this morning, let the word encourage us let the word touch us let the word build us up let the word bring us out of the desert let the word bring us into the promises let the word stir us on the inside holy spirit that we can experience the anointing the presence of you god thank you father for this word this morning bless everyone who hears father in jesus mighty name Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Yori, Salamat Siang. In Taiwan, Mora May Ma. Good morning, good morning to everyone. What a privilege this morning to sit around the Word. This morning, this morning, my Word is let Him handle the details. And immediately you will ask yourself, where am I going? Let's start just before Jesus. Inach Huya Mora. Just before Jesus. You know, we're taken up to heaven after 50 days, after his resurrection. Or um, Let's go to Mark chapter 16 verse 15. I want to, want to speak this morning about God's way. What is God's way in making disciples? What is God's way bringing the gospel? And I just want to refresh something to you. I believe for many of us it will be a revelation because we have all of these things, Len, good morning, that we think we need to bring the gospel to the lost. 
Let's read in Mark 16, 15. And I want you to listen what, what Jesus told his disciples. And then we will go where actually Jesus sent them out. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, as you go into all the world, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. Whoever believes the good news and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe the good news uh, will be condemned. And I just want you to remember this scripture in 16. Whoever believes the good news and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe the good news will be condemned. Remember those two opposite. There's one receiving and one not receiving. I'm coming back to that. Verse 17, and these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. My question, are you saying yes to Jesus this morning, taking and bringing the gospel wherever you are, there in the marketplace where you move? God says there will be people that will receive the word. They will be saved, they will be baptized, but there will be people who will not receive the word that you bring to them. I mean, I mean, even in Jesus' ministry, there were two people. There were one people accepting and one people did not. So he says, and, and, and the ones, Pastor Saki Guyamora, and these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. Meaning if you trust God, something is about to happen when you open your mouth and speak about Jesus. Speak about salvation. Let's go on. Mark 16, 18. He says, they will be supernaturally protected from snakes, from drinking anything poisonous, and they will lay hands upon the sick and heal them. A promise upon promise. And after saying these things, Jesus was lifted up into heaven and sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of God. Uh, good morning, good morning, Vitpurki. Uh, Mark 16, 20, and the apostles went out announcing the good news, and the apostles did they did not just hear the word going out. They actually went out. And listen what it says. They went out announcing the good news everywhere. Not on a Sunday or only on a Sunday. Not just on an outreach. Every one of us that's being saved, Lapis Guyamora, has an opportunity, but also a mandate that God is with you when you open your mouth and you speak about Jesus and salvation. And some will come to the knowledge and some will be saved and some not. And he says, as they, they went out announcing the good news everywhere, as the Lord himself consistently worked with them. I want you to hear this word. God will work with you consistently. This is only a foundation on what I, I'm about to speak about this morning. Dion, Guyamora, good morning. So God himself consistently will work with you if you, if you if you choose to believe the word of God. It says validating the message they preach with miracle signs that accompany them. Meaning God will do the miracle. God just asks you, lay your hand upon the sick. Trust me, believe, and I will do that. Amen. So this is Jesus' last things before actually, you know, uh, he was being lifted out. Mini Guyamora, good morning. So let's see how Jesus taught his disciples to do evangelism and discipleship. Amen. And my question this morning, are we building accurate on the blueprint the Bible speaks about how to bring the gospel to the lost? We have so many things, you know, we have this 10 steps, how to get people saved. But I want to, I want to bring you this morning to the word of God, what did Jesus taught his disciples. Let's go to Mark chapter 6. Verse 7 to 13. I'm going to really, I really want you to listen, open up your ears. Because this is the blueprint on what Jesus says, how we should do things. So Jesus in Mark chapter 6 verse 7, it says, He called the twelve apostles, sent them out two by two, and gave them authority over evil spirits. While it lines up what we just read, you know, in the, in the first scripture, when God says, you go out, bring the gospel to the lost. Some will receive that and be saved. Some will not. Yet Jesus show us how the actions should happen when he sent out his disciples. He said, 
I sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirit. The first thing you need to understand, you have authority. It's not something you need to seek. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you understand, and with the Holy Spirit, you have the authority. Amen. So Jesus called the twelve together. Agi, we are more a good morning. These disciples remained with him every day since he had chosen them. We see that Jesus, they were aware of both his public teachings and of his private interpretations. Meaning, they heard what other people hear, and also in the privateness, he spoke to them, bringing revelation. They had both. So, there was no way they could not understand what Jesus says. But now, it was time to send them. They received the knowledge. They heard. They see what, what Jesus did. Now, Jesus sent them out. The same as us. Once we come to Christ, we've been bold up. Now it's time to go out. Amen. So Jesus now assigned them to the task of sharing his ministry and equip them with the authority to fulfill the task. I want to tell you this morning, you are equipped for the task. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit, because of God's word, because of his authority, because of his blood, and because being obedient to what Jesus said, you go out and bring this gospel of salvation to the lost. You already qualified. Many people are waiting for things. Many people are, you know, they stagnant because God must do something. This is the time when God said, I'm sending you out. Listen what happened. So they would share in the power of Jesus' ministry. Operationally, he sent them in groups of two, commissioned and equipped them for their work in his name. Just as, you know, we are sent by God to do the same thing. Their first assignment was a training ground for the future great commission that would be theirs for the rest of their lives. Meaning when we got saved and we get into a discipleship program with our church and we're getting involved, we are trained. But it's not something staying just being trained. There's something more that needs to happen. And that's the action that follows on what we hear. Amen. So after Jesus arose from the dead and ascended in his glory to heavens, these disciples would be empowered with the Holy Spirit. This is us under whose influence they would carry the gospel to the ends of the world. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says the following, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Listen, when you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you already received the power. And then he says, Then you will be my witness to testify about me in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. Now let's go to verse 8. So Jesus, verse 8 says, He instructed them. Now listen, Jesus said, you go out. I send you out. Now we're getting to the practical side, how and what they should do. So verse 8 says the following. He instructed them to take nothing along on the trip except a walking stick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Take nothing along when you bring the gospel, except a walking stick. They were not to take any food, a traveling bag, or money in their pockets. They only took a staff, a walking stick similar to that of a shepherd's staff. They were to take no food or money for their journey, because their necessities would be provided as needed. I want you to hear this morning. Jesus, show us. Through his disciples hearing the message and comprehend the message as they see what Jesus did. Now he sent them out. He said, listen, you take nothing with. You just take whatever you have on you, your clothes, and you go out. He says, why? Because he says your necessities would be provided as needed. Now I'm coming to my, to my theme for today. Let him handle the details too many people are so you know i say if i say minded about the things they think they need before they can become disciples of jesus christ so i say what a contrast to our business travels today even our missionary trips 
Just think for a day, if there's a missionary trip or a church sent out people, you know, we like to arrange things in advance. What did Jesus say to them? I arrange nothing. You go out. God will supply your need, the necessity as you need that. You know, in today's time, we like to arrange things in advance. Leona Guyamora. Our flights is scheduled. Our cars are reserved. Jesus' directive seems to make no sense. How could his men be expected to fulfill the objective of their commission without providing the basic need of the human existence? And that's the door that many people stop them from bringing the gospel. Because of the things they needed, but they want it to be planned, they cannot trust God for supplying the needs, and the devil used that to stop you for bringing the gospel. Because we always we need something, but Jesus said to his disciples, I send you, you bring nothing. Let's go on. Listen what he says. They, would, they could wear sandals. But could not take a long change of clothes. He doesn't even say bring a bag of clothes. He said just wear the sandals. So Jesus directed them to wear sandals for why? For there was much ground to be covered. Because they walked everywhere. However the disciples were not to pack even a second tunic. Because one would be enough. I want you to hear the word of God this morning. A summary of Jesus directions for their daily sustenance. Note that the disciples were to take nothing extra. We can only you know, surmise that Jesus intended for the disciples to depend on Him. The same today. Jesus wants you to depend on Him when you bring the gospel. Jesus wants you not to the things that you think you need to, to make that successful. This is the blueprint how Jesus teach his disciples let's go on so he intend for the disciples to depend on him he wanted them to understand that god was their source in whatever endure they undertook god wants you to know that he is your source whatever thing you do for the kingdom of god he is your source amen so they were commanded to embark upon the ministry without any personal funds or provisions now, if we look at today and we send people out, we, we, we provide at least money for daily needs. And if there's no money, we cannot send them out. If the church don't have money to provide for the things, the devil is using the things where we should, you know, we, where we should rely on Jesus, on, on God's necessities that he will supply them, block the thing that we bring the gospel to the lost. How many people say, if I just have money, but you know what, if you trust God and obey God, according to what He did to His disciples, He will provide as you go. Amen. You know, I can just bring a testimony some time ago, maybe a year or one ago, I would testify about this. You know, I, I knew this family in, in Petersburg, Polokwane, many, many years ago, 1995. Now the husband was medically retrenched already, maybe in his late fifties. His wife worked with me in the office. You know what they do for holiday? They don't go like other people holiday uh, to the sea and just relax. No, no. When they have holiday, they pack their, you know, they pick up and and uh, whatever money they save, and they go to Zambia and bring the gospel. They they use their holiday. And many times she would have told me they only had enough money for one tank of fuel plus maybe half a tank. They have no arrangements where they will end up. They have no plan. They stand on this because Jesus said we need to go with what we have. Lisa, good morning. So what we have. And, so, and they will get into this vehicle. And you know what? God will direct them time after time and supply their needs. Because they lived what happened here in Mark 6 when Jesus sent out. They didn't allow what they did not have to prohibit, you know, the work of God to be done. So the result, I mean, so I say they were commanded to embark upon the ministry without personal funds or provisions. Iris, good morning. 
the result would be a valuable lesson of faith. And that's why I'm this morning talking about let God handle your details. Don't let your details become the obstacle for you to do them to do what Jesus said we're supposed to do. Don't let the things of your daily need become the obstacle and the reason why you become stagnant for not bringing the gospel. Let's go to verse 10. Now listen what he says. Uh, good morning, my wife. He told them, verse 10, whenever you go into a home, stay there until you are ready to leave that place. Listen what he says. He says, go out, take nothing, bring the gospel, and if you find a home, Stay there until you're ready to leave that place. Now, let me explain what it means. So, they had nothing. They preached the gospel and people will act. And those people will bring them to the house. And he says, stay there, teach them. Uh, Bethany, uh, Salamat um, So, he said, then stay there and they will provide actually on the daily needs. Now, listen what it means. Jesus provided disciples with this instruction. Whenever you entered a town... They were to locate a household that could function as their headquarters and then remain there until the time came for them to leave that town. So what in practical sense happened? He will send them out. They will, they will preach. They will minister. And God will work with them. And people will get saved. And in that they will find a house becoming a, a home cell. And those people will then be equipped and other people around that that's being saved will be also equipped until they move on. I want you to see that. He would, how would the disciples know where to go? Maybe you asked this morning, where should I go? How would they know which people would be their host? The answer is that they knew nothing in advance. I want you to hear something. They did not know. There was not somebody of another church that you will meet if you are sent abroad. There's not somebody... And, and I've read this about John G. Lake. You know, when John G. Lake the first time came to South Africa, he was in the 1905, I think. Um, what happened is he was a wealthy man. And God said, sell everything, give it away. And his wife and some of the people got onto the boat and they came to Cape Town. But nothing was arranged in advance. They just came on, on what God is saying. They trust God for their needs. They trust God. I think they said he had like $23 in his pocket. And as they came to Cape Town and they stepped on the harbor, there was no one to fetch them because nothing was arranged. And you know what? It says that the wife said, who will pick us up? We don't know. But God will supply the necessity for this thing because we are obedient going out bringing the gospel. So what happened then? 30 minutes later, here this lady come and said, listen, I don't know, but I prayed and God spoke to me, this pastor from America is coming. Are you that pastor? Because I'm here to pick you up. You see, God supply when we follow his guidelines. So the answer, you know, they knew nothing in advance. Because, what, you know, we limit the Holy Spirit by planning. I'm not saying don't plan. But what I'm saying, listen what Jesus teaches disciples. Jesus knew they would be cared for and that the loving Father would provide for all their needs. Just as you today, Jesus knew or know that you will be cared for. That's why he could say that. He knew that the Father will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will provide if you are willing, not let the things you need become the obstacle. But even you lacking and you move out. God will supply that needs. And I want to tell you this morning, let God handle the details. Don't let your details become the obstacle for not doing the Great Commission. Let's read in verse 11. Wherever people don't welcome you, listen to you. Whenever people don't welcome you or listen to you, Leave and shake the dust from your feet as a warning to them. Remember in the first I said there's some people that will hear, receive the gospel, being saved, being baptized, and there will be people that will not. So I'm telling you, there will be people that will reject you. There will be people that will be saved. You just do what God has sent and equipped you for. Amen. So Jesus then outlined the spirit in which... The, 
you know, they should do the ministry. So apparently when the disciples entered a city, they were to follow Jesus' example. What was Jesus' example? He went into the synagogue and preaching. He went into the street and on the way, he found people calling him like Bartholomew, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because they've, they've known the anointing, they've known the Messiah in what they've experienced. So Jesus said, you follow as you, you learn from me as I, as I do. So an example to preach, to heal and to cast out demons. Jesus knew that their ministry would not attract anyone. He himself had just experienced that in Nazareth, where the people of his hometown did not really receive him, and not many miracles were, were actually happened in them. So therefore, Jesus instructed his disciples to perform the task of the ministry and not to be concerned about the reception of their efforts. Can I say that again? You know, we are so concerned about the reception of our efforts. And we're not that concerned about to perform the task of the ministry. I want you to hear this morning the word of God. Jesus said, listen, you perform the task, what I ask you. Do not be concerned about the reception of your efforts. If received, they should rejoice and accept the hospitality. If not received, they should leave and shake the dust from your feet as a warning for them. Now, where does this come from? In the Jewish culture of the day, it was customary for a Jew to shake off the dust of his feet when leaving pagan territories. I want you to see this. To preserve and maintain the purity of, of their Jewish culture. This was a symbolic gesture that reminded Jew of his unique heritage and that he was of, of, you know, one of God's chosen. It was also a sign that the pagan did not participate in the Jewish traditions. Jesus now, now used this cultural custom against the Jews, the people. So this expression would symbolize that the disciples were Jesus, Jesus chosen. So when you're not received in a house, when you bring the gospel, you just shake off the dust. Why? What are you saying? You do not and did not receive Jesus. So I leave that with there. Amen. So the Jewish race would not be enough. They would not be chosen by the Son of God Himself. So actually the same thing they implied or act on. Jesus now said, if you shake it off, if somebody comes to you bringing the gospel and you do not receive, you cannot receive the Son of God and I shake you off. Amen. I want you to see that. So rejection of His chosen delegates was rejection of Jesus. And the same with you today. If someone reject you, it's not rejecting you. They reject Jesus. Amen. There's nothing more that God offers humankind than to send His only Son to repent. Amen. So let's go to verse 12. So the apostles heard that. They didn't bring anything. They act on what Jesus said. And verse 12, it says, So the apostles went and told people that they should turn to God and change the way they think and act. Listen, this is the message we preach. Once we preach about uh, salvation, is for people to act, amen, so that they can change their ways and the way they think. So after Jesus' instructions, the disciples perform the assigned task of proclaiming the good news. Repentance was the predominance theme of John the Baptist. So when John the Baptist was laying the foundation, it was all about repent because he said someone is coming. When Jesus began, began his ministry, he preached the same message to the people. Now listen what Mark 1.15 says. The time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Change the way you think and act and believe the good news. Now that was the same message Jesus passed on to his disciples. The same message he passed on to you and me. Let's go to verse 13. They also forced many demons out of people and poured oil on many who were sick to cure. So what to cure them? So what happened? They saw what Jesus did. They followed the instructions. They went out. They laid a hand upon the sick. And guess what? Those people were healed. Where people were demonized, those people will be set free. Just like, just like their teacher 
The disciples' ministry were marked with miracles. I'm just asking the question, are we miss something? Isn't the, the fact that miracles is the thing that make to open people's eyes? Amen. They too cast out many demons and healed the sick. So Jesus not only assigned them to this task, but he also empowered them to accomplish such remarkable deeds. Amen. So many principles can be learned from what we've just read. We earnestly seek, you know, today we're looking for formulas to apply in our churches. How to save someone. How to bring the gospel. And everything is attached to the needs and that can limit. But we need to exercise, you know, also to understand God is working that's the basic of going out. But yeah, God can have a different pattern in a different circumstance. But the basic remains the same. Amen. So God engineers a distinct blueprint for each other, you know, for, for your ministry. God can maybe speak something similar to that and add something else. But the thing is, we need to carry out the mandate. We need to bring, actually, there's no excuse if there's no money. That's actually what it says. If you have the money, well, use the money. Doesn't mean if that's the, the spirit of God saying this is how you need to do it, to do it. But the thing is, it says actually, if there's nothing, you need to trust God. I mean, if we bring the message, you know, of what I've just read in Mark 6, you know, into one praise or one phrase, it is that God provide for His own. I want you to hear this morning. God shall provide for you the second message is that we need not to worry about the details let him handle the details it's many times the details that make us to not going out amen so we fret over this decision and that one i mean that's the thing we we're so busy fretting about things where our next you know, mortgage payment will come from. Where we should take the new job in a, should we take the new job in a distant city? Should we marry this? And it goes on. There's so many things that we fret about. And those things make us not to go out. I want to read to you in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 27. Listen what Jesus is saying. So I tell you, stop worrying about what you will eat and drink or wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? It's like Jesus said, listen, you have no excuse to bring the gospel. If you are trusting God and believe God has sent you and you believe the word of God and that you are empowered, there's nothing that should limit you to do that. He says, look at the birds. They don't plant, harvest or gather the harvest into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you, aren't you worth more than they? Can't, can any of you add a single hour to your life by worrying? I said, thou we are not told, you know, surely similar doubts rear, rear in the minds of the disciples. I can just imagine being a disciple, maybe Peter. You know, Peter spoke so many things and he was the only one that's married. I, the Bible doesn't say how long they went. It could have been maybe two months, three months. Because if they had to preach and stay in one house and, and teach them, maybe it could have been for a time. But, but we can almost hear the disciples take only a staff. Is he joking? And if I'm telling you today, God is sending you not bringing anything to bring the gospel. You will say, well, I cannot. So, I mean, what was their initial reaction the disciples uh, you know when they heard that what was their mindset just as you today we are so if i i want to say the following we we, we are so pre-planned about what we need before we can go that many of us never go you go through your life because you're always lacking Yes, I want to change the world. I want to go like Pastor Saki on an outreach. I want to bring, and you know, to people that's living in, diff in difficult situations. But I do not have. Well, what does Jesus say this morning? You just go. You let God handle the details. 
You maybe feel God sent me to Africa, but I they cannot afford the plane ticket. I want to tell you, you don't need, you need to trust God on His word and the calling He's calling you for. Amen. So just think, if, I mean, the word is still valid today. We're also being taught. We're also being equipped. But when it comes to going out, we have all of these things that need to be pre-planned. And money is the biggest thing we need to do the will of God. But yet Jesus said, listen, you'd bring nothing, not even an extra set of clothing. Nothing. No money, no food. How much more my father will not provide for you, they said. I mean, they could have think in their hearts, well, it must be a joke. I mean, we don't know what is their initial reaction. But you know what? God blessed the work the disciples did because they did came back and, and they testified that even the demons flee from them. I say whatever we struggle with today, the best course of action is simply to submit it to God. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Turn all your anxieties over to God because He cares for you. You know, we have so many anxieties about care. I mean, life becomes so expensive. But God is still the supplier of your need. We are to literally have our burdens or heave our burdens off of our shoulders unto another. And that's on Jesus Christ. In Matthew 11, 28, 30, it says the following. Come to me, all you are tired from carry, he carry heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Place my yoke over your shoulders and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble. Then you will find rest for yourself, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We need to trust God for our futures. He assures us that we can find rest, but we are called. And I want to stop here. I want to stop here. We are called for the great commission. And we saw how Jesus show us actually by sending out his disciples, bringing the gospel, the good news to the lost. And he said, bring nothing. And he says, listen, you will come into a town. But what you've been taught, trust me, I will work with you. Signs and wonders will follow you. And there will be people that will not accept you. And there will be people that will accept with a glad heart the salvation. And through them, God will supply whatever is needed. So I, this morning, I just felt this, you know, to tell and to, to speak this this morning to you. Let God handle the detail. If you felt that God is calling you in your spirit, you felt that I mean, it's not just evangelism or evangelists that this is relevant. That's to every one of the body of Christ. Maybe it's in your work. Maybe it's just like, you know, you know, bringing. And so many of us want to do something. Most of us want to do something to the poor. But you know what the poor need? They need the word of God. Because once they accept Jesus, you know, the word of God and God will help them being transformed. And becoming or coming out of that situation. Let God handle the details in your life. When it comes that you need to trust God, trust God. Don't look at what you don't have. Maybe you are busy working and you're struggling with some money issues. But you are already busy in the field doing something for the kingdom of God. But then all of these things added, where will I get my mortgage or my rent from? Where will I pay this? And the fuel is becoming expensive. Listen, if we read this morning, you are the sent ones. Even you are busy maybe in your church with church work, but you are still the sent one. Trust God this morning. Let Him handle the details. You need to trust Him. You need to rely on Him. You need to put your faith in Him. But the main thing is, we can never say, you know, we never had, let's say, the opportunity to bring the gospel. Because I would never had enough money. I never had enough resources. Then actually, you did not obey what God is saying. Because if you laid on your heart to go to an area, He said, just go. Bring nothing. But now today, it's like we want to bring food to an area and give them food and and then we bring the gospel. Well, if, if that's what God is saying, do that. 
But at the end, it's, it's the Spirit of God that want to touch them. Me and you are only the messengers. And sometimes we will be accepted and sometimes not. But the main thing this morning in my heart is let God handle the detail. Don't let the detail become your obstacle in the basic necessities of daily life becomes the obstacle and the excuse for you not to bring the gospel. But if you can put God on His word, assuredly not, He will not forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you. But I will provide for you. And that's my message this morning. Because you are special. And there's a harvest that needs to hear, you know, the gospel. Because that was Jesus' last message. We should go out. He will work together. You don't need to take anything. He will provide and He will work with you. Amen. I would like to pray for you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. Lord, forgive us that so many times we make money the decisive factor to go out. Whereas you told your disciples, after they've seen your ministry, they've heard the message, they heard the explanations, you then teach them to go out. And the basic thing you said, you bring nothing. By saying, don't let anything become the obstacle, especially not what you will eat, what you will wear, what you need, become the obstacle. For becoming stagnant and not bringing the good news. You send them out with nothing but by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will work with them. With the promise that the Father will provide whatever is needed. And how much more this morning, this is the only message we need to hear. Is that the Father will handle the detail. That the Father will supply. How much more if He supplied to the birds and how much more not to us as His children. Being obedient, bringing the gospel. And therefore, Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts this morning, our eyes this morning. And wherever we, we did not move when you said move because of what we lacking, forgive us this morning. Forgive us this morning. I just pray this morning, just, just as we are, we should bring the gospel. Wherever we, we are planted, we are rooted, we should bring the gospel. We should bring the message. Because you will work together in the hearts of the people, bringing them to salvation. And yes, some of them will not receive. And when you come to a place and you've not been received, shake off the dust. To say, listen, but you cannot become part of the kingdom of God. You cannot become part of, you cannot have salvation through Jesus Christ. Therefore, by shaking it off, he's actually saying, you know what? I've done, you've heard the message, but you're not willing to change. You're not willing to receive. You may be not ready, but I shake it off as I move on. But once we have the open door, that it becomes the place of teaching and providing. And this is the message to this morning, Lord, that you will handle the details. I just pray this morning, touch everyone. Ignite them, Lord, to rise up, even they have or do not have, just to start to share the gospel wherever we come, knowing that some will receive and some not. But the ones receiving will will also be the ones being eligible to be taught and to be equipped and being discipled, bringing them to glory and to fullness of God's calling for their life. Father, I thank you this morning. Holy Spirit, touch everyone. Ignite them this morning. Ignite them, Lord, to go out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating. Um, like I've said, you know, we've been talking, you know, uh, in Kingdom Disciples Network the last couple of weeks. We talk about discipleship and, and it's just amazing, you know, 
people need to be equipped, but at some point they also need to go out. And I want really to, to tell you, it's time to go out. doesn't matter what you, you don't have. You have a mouth. You have the Word of God. You have the authority. Just start to move and allow Jesus to work in the people. You bring the gospel. And the ones do not receive, just shake off the dust from your shoe. Don't allow that it become negative, but rather allow and rejoice with the one that, that do receive. The gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Share this with someone. I believe someone needs to hear this. People need to be activated. I will also put this on YouTube. You can go to YouTube. Niels Foster's Ministries. And uh, just go and watch. I will put it there. Share it to other people. Because I believe it's time for activation. But also the main thing. Let God handle the detail in your life. Maybe the things you fret about. The, main, the things you worry about. The things that is standing between you and being happy. Being happy means you can bring the gospel. Not being happy and worry about things and fret about things, meaning you are stuck. May God loosen you. May you move out. And may you move in that joy. And see the signs and the wonders and miracles God will do through your life. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Amen.